If you have a few unlocks, five minutes, and a cellular device, then you too can make over 3 million GP per hour with the farming skill. My name is Darnik and I play this game to be as lazy as possible. That doesn't mean I won't sit down for some tough grinds or amazing content, but I still like to enjoy my life outside of Gilinor. That means I don't want to spend hundreds of hours grinding boring money-making methods to make my GP. So what does any smart lazy person do? They find shortcuts to make great GP by playing as little as possible. And that's what I've done with the farming skill. And in today's video, I'll show you exactly how it's done. First off, let's break down typical farming training. You plant a tree, wait for it to grow, and then you harvest for some juicy XP. Normally this is pretty pricey and causes farming XP to go into the negatives when it comes to GP, but there are various crops you can plant for some juicy profit. These include herbs, hops, and various other patches across the world of Gilinor. Planting all of these patches allows you to make a huge profit per run. And the best part is you can do whatever else you want while the plants are growing. Do a slayer task, boss with some friends, or hell, just even log out and go about your day. Then when your plants are done growing big and strong, go do your run and reap your profits. Sounds easy, right? Well, it is. And I'm gonna break down all of the items, quests, and unlocks that you'll need to make the most of your runs. To start, let's dive into where the patches are located because they're spread all around the world of Gilinor. And without the best teleports, it take you all day to run between them. But luckily for us, there's teleports directly to most of the patches. On screen now are all of the herb patches with their best in slot teleports along with a couple other options. But herbs aren't the only patches that we'll be visiting in this video. So on screen now are all of the hops patches spread across Gilinor. And finally, we have one last type of patch that we'll be running to, bushes. Bush patches are now on screen for you to see. I'd recommend screenshotting or coming back to this portion of the video to see what unlocks you have and how to best reach these patches. And if you have the attention span of a squirrel, I'll be doing some example runs a little bit later on in the video. But for now, let's talk about what kind of equipment can help make the most of that green thumb. Now, unfortunately, you can't just grab some seeds and head to your nearest patch and start planting. You'll need to grab a few key items before you can really start raking in that money. You see what I did there, raking? Because <laughs> you're farming. Okay, well, like I was saying, you're going to need some pretty important items to start off. First and foremost, you're going to need yourself a pair of trusty magic secatars that you get after the completion of Fairy Tale Part 1. These bad boys increase the yield on your crops by 10%. This is the most essential item to make the most GP as possible. From there, you'll need the standard farming equipment, rake, spade, and the seed dipper. But we can't forget the compost. I always recommend using ultra compost on all your crops. It's super cheap, reduces the chance of disease by 90%, and on average increases your crop yield by over 20%. It's a key item to get when trying to farm for GP. And the last super important item is the bottomless compost bucket. This bad boy stores compost for you, but not only that, it doubles any compost you put into it, effectively cutting the price of compost in half. These items are essential to really come out on top with farming, but they aren't the only items I'd recommend getting your hands on. Getting around to all your different patches is gonna be tough. Most patches are in remote locations and some require unique teleports. Getting your hands on the following items will make the runs a breeze and cut down on time during your runs. By completing the Lumbridge and Draenor Medium Diary along with the Ardonge will reward you with their level 2 items. The Explorer Ring and the Ardonge Cloak. Both of these provide an instant teleport to a herb patch, with medium providing three teleports per day, hard providing five, and elite having unlimited teleports. These are some amazing diary unlocks that will make your runs so much faster. Next up is Zarek's Talisman. If you spend any time in Zaya, you know how hard it is to get around. So you might already have your hands on one of these bad boys, but if not, you can grab a Xerix Talisman from Defeating Lizardmen. These drop at a rate of one out of 250, which may sound daunting, but with how quickly you can kill Lizardmen, it goes pretty quickly. Once you get your hands on one, you just charge it up with some Lizardman fangs and you're ready to go. The Talisman has a teleport to Xerox Glaive, which is right next to the Hosidious Herb patch. 
Speaking of the Hosidius herb patch, you are going to want Hosidius favor completed, not just for the Hosidius herb patch, but also for the ability to use the farming guild. Both of these require 60% Hosidius favor, which is actually pretty easy to get. And it unlocks two of the best patches in the game. Hosidius patch being completely disease free. And then the one in the farming guild, well, I don't know why they don't watch it. There's tons of farmers around, but regardless, it's super quick to just teleport there. So that one is a good one to have available but the farming guild patch does require level 65 farming but if you're doing these runs pretty frequently you'll have that in no time now we do have an herb patch located deep in Mortania, and getting over there is pretty annoying to say the least but after the completion of the ghost ahoy quest you get yourself a pretty little ectophile this goo in a vial teleports you directly to the heart of Mortania with a quick little run south and you'll be right at the patch and to wrap up teleports, you'll just need to complete making friends with my arm to get access to basal. These quirky little rocks will teleport you directly to different locations. And you'll need the stony and icy basalt for quick teleports to this troll stronghold and the Weiss patches. Now you're ready to know what to wear. And honestly, you can wear whatever you want. If you have under level 70 agility, you may want to slap on some graceful. Or if you're looking to maximize your farming XP on these runs, then the farming outfit will boost that by 2.5%. And hey, special shout out. If you're already level 99 farming, make sure you have on that farming cape as it increases all yields by 5% when worn. But other than this, go crazy. Have your fashion scape on or whatever items you like. With all these items and unlocks under your belt, you're ready to get going and get to harvesting some GP. But before you start planting anything, let's talk about the amazing perks that you can get by just checking off a few diaries. Completion of the Candoran Diary increases your crops resilience up to 15% at the Catherby patch. This might not seem like much, but after a few dead Snapdragon seeds, this can really add up big. And next is the completion of the Hard Corinne and Kebos Diary. This gives a 5% increased resilience at both the Hosidius and Farming Guild herb patches. So these are all the items, unlocks, and equipment you're going to need for your for-profit farming. With all that info in hand, let's jump into an example run. First things first, we're going to start with my basic run that I personally do every 80 minutes. This is just a good old herb run. You're going to want to set up a bank tab that allows you to get your items off as fast as possible. As you see mine, I just click in a row and I'm ready to rock and roll. Getting all the items out and ready is one of the biggest hurdles for farm runs, because if it takes forever and you end up missing something, you're just not gonna wanna do it in the future. So be prepped and ready so you can get going as fast as possible. Now, to my knowledge, there really isn't a super efficient maximum method. You can go to whatever patches you have unlocked with the teleports you have, but I'm gonna show you my typical route. I grab all my items from my run and head directly to my player owned house. I've set up my portal nexus with all the teleports needed at the top. So I can just click one, two, three, and four to hit all of those patches. Once I finish the last patch on the nexus, I'll head over to my spirit tree. This is actually technically maybe the fastest teleport to the Mortania patch, but the Ectophile is a much easier unlock than the elite Lumbridge and Drain or Diary. But if you do have it finished, then this is a really nice alternative. From there, I'll use my explore ring to go to the Falador patch, making sure to note what herbs I have at the tool Leprechaun. And then I'll use the Artie Cloak to hit that Ardonge herb patch. Then it's on to Hosidius using Xerix's Talisman. And then I wrap up with my Max Capes teleport to the Farming Guild. Now, I know most of you watching don't have a Max Cape, and that's okay. You can use a Skills Necklace to the Farming Guild as a good alternative. Now, almost all these teleports you can be using can be set up in your house. I highly, highly, highly recommend doing this as it makes the runs so much more convenient. And having either a rune pouch with the runes to teleport to house or just having a teleport tab makes these runs so much easier. Hey, and shout out to World 330 Host because most of these houses are going to have all of these teleports there. So if you don't have these unlocked in your own house, use other players' houses. Now, if I were to just do this quick four minute run every 80 minutes, I'd make around 2.5 to 3 million GP per day. But there's also the option to make even more GP on the same timer. So let's hop into the advanced run. The advanced run starts off extremely similar to the herb run. Grab all the same items, but just a few extra seeds. You want to grab some jute seeds, and if it's your first time ever doing this run, make sure to grab some bush seeds as well. Jangerberry and white poison ivy are most of the time the best. This run only differs once you completed the herb portion, where they're going to be hitting both bush patches and hot patches across Gillenor. All of these patches run off the same timer, so it's extremely easy to harvest them all at the same time. 
So since I ended up at the farming guild after my last herb run, I'll just run a bit east to hit that first bush patch. Then I'll teleport to the champion's guild using the teleport in my ornate jewelry box. If you don't have this unlocked, a combat brace or the chronicle will do the trick. Once you arrive, run west to the bush patch and start harvesting your bushes. Then run south to the hot patch and go to town. Once that's finished, I'll teleport back to my house using the Camelot teleport and run northwest to arrive at the hops patch. Then I go on to Yanel with the Watchtower teleport. And after that, we're gonna use the Arty Cloak to teleport to the Monastery as there's a bush patch located right outside. Once that's harvested, you wanna either use a Ring of Wealth or the Ornate Jewelry Box to teleport to Miscellanea. Run a bit east and you'll find yet another bush patch. With all those done, we just have two more to go and they're pretty close together. I just teleport to my house and step on out. Mine's personally located in Remington, so it makes this extremely easy. To the north of the house portal is the last bush patch. Go ahead and harvest that bad boy and then run south, and pretty far south, all the way to the docks. We're going to be going to Ontrana, which means you can't take any equipment that has stats. So use the bank deposit box to put up that max cape or farming cape and get across to the island. Once there, run a bit east for that last hop patch. Now yeah, that's a doozy of a run, and it can take upwards of 8 to 10 minutes depending on your unlocks and your clicking speed. But if done every 80 minutes, you'll be cashing in on over 4.5 million GP per day. Now granted, this is at level 99 with all unlocks, but you can check your own profit out on the wiki with its herb profit calculator. Fill in your level, your unlocks, and it'll provide you with your expected GP per run. This can be great to find out which herb is the best for you to use. So realistically, the basic run will net you anywhere between 1.5 to 3 million GP per day, and the advanced run will bring anywhere from 3 to 4 million GP. It honestly just depends on how much effort you really want to put into it. But the great thing about all of these runs is even doing eight plus per day, they take no more than five minutes. So effectively, you're making almost 3.5 to 4 million GP per hour. Now me personally, I just do the herb run eight to nine times per day and bring in 3.2 million GP for just a few minutes of work. But hold your horses, because with everything in old school RuneScape, there are some tips and tricks to make everything so much easier. First off, let's talk about some plugins that'll make your runs that much easier. First, we have the time tracking plugin. This bad boy keeps notifications for all of your patches across Gillinor. And with the reminder up on screen, you're never gonna forget when a patch is ready. And well, there is more you can set up with the notifications, but this is really just up to you. It's called the push notification plugin. You need to download this from the plugin hub and set it up, but essentially you can get sent text messages to your phone whenever your patches are ready. I tested it for a bit and it's pretty useful, but you do have to spend some money on the API notification, so it's really up to you. But being on the go and getting a message that your herbs are ready allows you to jump in the game right away on mobile and reap the rewards. Now, the next big plugin is the Menu Entry Swapper. This bad boy allows you to change the left-click option on almost every item in the game. This means you can set all those items with teleports, just a simple left click and set them at a right click and scroll and do all that. Instead, it's just boom, and you're there. It makes the run that much faster. And finally, the last plugin I recommend is the Bank Layout plugin. This allows you to make some sick layouts so you can bank extremely quickly. This is the key for getting that juicy 3.2 million GP per hour on those herb runs. Now, with herb runs or farming runs in general, the name of the game is Speed. The faster you get the seeds planted, the faster the next cycle begins, the faster you make money. So you wanna be as fast as possible and one of the biggest ways to speed them up is to spam click the herbs yes spam click as fast as you can for some reason in the magical spaghetti code that is old school runescape if you click a bunch of times you actually harvest faster 50 percent faster that is so you'll reap your plants get everything harvested and get back to planting that much quicker and finally, one of the biggest help you can get while farming is planting an anima seed. These seeds come in three different types, but for farming for profit, you're just looking for two, the eyesore and the addis seed. These are gonna lower the chance of disease or boost the yield from your crops. Best of all, these bonuses last for over three days. Now you might be asking yourself, these seeds sound awesome. How do I get my hands on them? Well, you're going to need to plant a Hespori and then kill it for a chance at one of these seeds. Hespori can be planted with level 65 farming and access to the farming guild. It'll take around a day to grow and then you can fight it. It's a pretty simple boss fight that involves you killing some flowers, untangling yourselves from vines, and getting its HP to zero. Once it's killed, it roll a chance to drop one of the amazing anima seeds. And typically, once you have a stack of five to 10 Hespori seeds, if you keep planting and killing it over and over again, you're never gonna run out. Now, Hespori seeds are a little rare to come by. You get them as you're farming herbs or farming crops across Gilinor. But if you do enough of these runs, I'd say three or four per day, you will eventually stock up on 
found more than enough aspori seeds to keep up your supply of animas. So who knew that farming could be so profitable? Well, I did, and matter of fact, I have a series in which I create a brand new account and level it up from scratch. It's a journey to be a noob no more, and one of the biggest money-making methods that I use are herb runs. And if you're not familiar with it at all, you can check it out in the link in the description. Thanks for watching.